Welcome to the final video in the Angular Tour of Heroes app. So far, we have done, uh, we've made the hero components, we've been able to display the data, we've been able to make a feature component, we've been able to add services, and we've done some routing as well. We've also done some HTTP requests, in particular the GET request, and set up a uh, in-memory server. So we're going to continue off and finish off by doing the CRUD application so we're able to update, um, delete, uh, create uh, new heroes and persist that to the in-memory database and we're also going to do a filter method to be able to uh, find the right hero depending on our search query. So with that Let's get into it. And here's the state of the application. Um, you know, we have, we're able to click on the dashboard, click on a particular name. That shows us the name here uh, and the ID for that particular hero. We can add a, and make a change, which will make the change elsewhere. Uh, and we also get this message here, which we're able to clear if we wish. Uh, we can go back and click on the hero section that displays a list of all the heroes. Um, and we can clear these as well. Go back here. And now we're back on the dashboard. Now something we want to do is we want to save that change um, for the name change. So let's go ahead and get into that. So up. So Edit a hero's name in the hero's detail view. As you type, the hero name updates the heading at the top of the page. But when you click the go back button, the changes are lost. Now we wish to persist these changes, so we must write them to the server. Uh, at the end of the hero detail template, we'll make a save button. With click event binding, that invokes a new component method named save. So let's go to the hero detail component. Hero detail component. And we'll open up both the TypeScript and the uh, template. So we'll make this save button here. And then we need to actually create it. So let's make this save button. And Put this here. It's not returning anything. Um, okay, so we're going to do this from a service. So we need to go to the hero service and create the update hero. Um, but essentially, we're going to pass in um, this hero uh, and subscribe to it to that observable and. After we complete it, we're going to go back. So, hero refers to the input, and uh, so whatever input we choose, and that is uh, given through the template. So whatever hero we've clicked on, um, and given that we have selected a hero, they'll display the rest of it, including the name and uh, the label and all that. So for that hero, we're going to update that hero. And yeah, so let's go ahead and just implement the service. Uh, so let's copy this, update hero, uh, okay so we need to put this here, put the hero on the server, okay. So we're going to need this.http options. So let's add these here as well. And 
these HTTP options are relating to the headers. So we've already imported the headers, um, HTTP headers, and that's just so we can have the JSON type passed in. Uh, so when we update, we are updating, we're calling it from the hero detail component and we're calling this update hero with this particular hero instance and with that hero instance uh, that's what's being passed in to the service and then this time instead of making a get request we're making a put request so get is for retrieving data, put is for updating data and we need the URL. So the URL can be the same, uh, and it's not making the same request because there's a different uh, HTTP verb, so even though it's the same URL, because we have a different uh, HTTP verb, it's making a separate sort of request, so this will be making an update. And then the value that we're passing into update is the particular hero. And then we put this HTTP options. Now the get didn't need the HTTP options because we're just getting the data in the form that it was presented to uh, through the API. But this time we're passing something to the server and we need to clarify that the type is going to be of the JSON format. So we set the content type to application slash JSON. And we can pipe. Okay, so that will ex be expected to return a observable uh, of any type. Um, but if there is some sort of error, recall that we can pipe the first observable and do something with it and return a new observable with this catch error pipeable operator. So if there is an error, an observable error will be passed after here. Uh, then this tap won't be run, but this catch error will run because that's what its job is to do, to run the observable errors. And then we've made this custom error handler function, which this time will take any, um, and that will be with the update hero for the operation. And we're not returning an array of anything, so with the blank parameter, that sort of assumes that the result is going to be uh, like a null or uh, whatever the default is for that particular type. Um, or if it's a string, you know, a blank string or something like that. Uh, so something like that. And then, of course, if, the, um, if there is no error, will pipe into this tap. So recall that tap, um, it uh, sort of takes uh, whatever, whatever is happening in the first observable. Uh, we can sort of, we can log something from the first observable or we can just log something in general. Um, and because we don't know exactly what it's going to return um, due to this any and all that sort of stuff. We just put this like placeholder so the arrow function can work. Uh, it's more of like an abstract sort of way so anything can be for what, whatever gets returned, whatever that thing is, um, each time it's going to or the logging function, which just console logs the updated hero. Um, so that's just console log, and then this will return the observable uh, of the any type, which will be consumed in this hero detail component. Uh, so we can subscribe to that and 
after that has been uh, sort of fulfilled um, we can call this go back so we'll save it and then it will use the location uh, service which is built into angular common and that sort of tracks the last location uh, so if we click the back button it will go to the previous page that we were on so refresh the browser change your hero name and save your change okay let's refresh the browser let's click on a particular one so now we've got the details component and let's add narco with an exclamation mark and let's save that and then it automatically goes back to the home page and now there is this exclamation mark here I do want to see if we refresh the page if something persists because I'm not entirely sure about the in-memory database okay so that doesn't happen uh, okay so it must be in the memory of the sort of session that we're in opposed to the uh, client being open in general so let's just save that clear that and yeah so that's the save so that's the update so the next thing is to add a new hero to add a hero this app needs the hero's name it only needs a hero's name because we had the uh, generation of the ID in the previous video you can use an input element paired with an add button okay so let's insert that into the heroes component template we'll just copy that and we'll open up the heroes component template look at this and let's see div hero name label so let's put this here so we still want to display the list um, we still want to display this list and we still want to have this heading so in between those is where we would want to add hero name and have the ability to add a particular hero so this uh, is sort of like a template variable with the hash symbol in front of it uh, and we can use that so we can refer to it in the template so let's just save that and we'll see what that gives us um, so yeah so we've got this hero name we've got this input and we've got this add button and that add button, since it's a separate to the input, we can access it in the template uh, through like a click event of that button, um, which we'll call an add function, which we'll need to update or create. Um, and we'll do that in here, so we need to make that. Um, but this hero name is referring to this input. Uh, because we've given it this template variable and inputs can have a value so we can access it through object notation uh, with the value and it should be noted that we can perform multiple uh, functions or things to happen in our template and we just separate it with a colon as we would in line by line sort of JavaScript sort of thing uh, so we can also access uh, the hero name we set the hero name uh, value to an empty string as well when, when we do the click event which will so we when we click uh, submit it will call the function for that and then it will set it back to an empty um, an empty input so let's go ahead and add the corresponding TypeScript to that. Okay, so add this. 
And we're starting to see a bit of a trend here where we pass the um, the sort of the logic into the service, the, the logic that's relating to the HTTP request because the component shouldn't handle the HTTP request, request directly or anything to do with the data directly. And that's why we employ this service to handle that. So we keep the components lean and um, sort of structured. Um, so, okay, let's just go through that. We'll add that in as well. So add the hero. So let's save that and let's add this here. Maybe let's just try it out before we explain it. Because I find that that might be easier sometimes. So it says refresh the browser and add some heroes. So let's refresh the browser and let's add something. So I'm going to add the hero John. We can add that and it adds it to the list. And it clears this field as well. And then we can add another one as well. So we can have Larry. And that adds it to the list. So let's go through the logic. So in the heroes component, where the actual button is, we're calling this add function. And that pass has the value of the input uh, value. So with that input value name, which is of the type string, uh, and we're not returning any type. So if the name, so firstly we trim the name and that just gets rid of the white space. So for example, if I have uh, like one, two, three, four, five spaces, and then I type in Jono, and then one, two, three, four, five spaces it gets rid of the spaces uh, before and after the characters. So with that, if we don't have anything, so let's say I do space, 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 and then add, well that doesn't add anything because it's been trimmed down to nothing, which means it's a uh, falsy, it evaluates the falsy. Um, so we just return out of the function. But otherwise, if there is like an obvious sort of uh, word or a name there, <coughs> we'll need to add something. And we're adding it through the server. So that means we're persisting data somewhere, which means we need to employ the hero service. So that's this hero service and add hero. Uh, and then we have this sort of, um, Okay, so we have name as hero, and then we're gonna to subscribe to that, and whatever we get back from the HTTP request uh, will be a hero, and then for that, we will push it to the heroes array. So with the response from the HTTP request, uh, we'll get an observable so we subscribe to it and for that particular hero we get we push it to the array and the array of heroes is on an ng4 loop and then that's why it gets uh, added to the list so let's have a look at the service so add hero takes a particular hero which we pass in um, and okay so this gets This gets, uh, it sort of has this destructuring thing to it. So let's just do a console log. And that CLG is from the uh, ES6 JavaScript snippets um, extension. So I'm gonna go ahead and console log name. And that's just gonna be one, two, three. And then I'm also gonna do a shift alt down to duplicate that line. And I'll do a three, 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 four, name so we can sort of see what the difference between the two so okay let's just add a name now so we'll refresh this page press f12 for the Google Chrome developer tools 
and then let's add a name, Jono. Okay, so okay, so the first one is just the name, and that's what we would expect from the name variable. It's just the string Jono. Uh, but this um, this sort of I think it's destructuring syntax. I think that's what they call it. Um, so whatever the variable is inside of this object, um, not only does it, it assigns whatever the variable name is to the value of the variable in object notation. So it's just like a shortcut way to create uh, an object. Okay, so we can go ahead and delete these. So we're passing, we're passing that um, name, and then the hero name value object as hero. So that's going to be passed as a hero type, and the hero type, the hero type is an ID and a um, and a name but we're sort of forcing it to be of the hero type uh, through this so let's just take a look at the service and Yeah, okay, so the add hero is returning an observable of the hero type. That's what we're subscribing to. But to get that observable of the hero type, we're returning. Um, okay, we're doing a post request this time. And we're posting, uh, we're expecting the hero type. So we have that type uh, there. And then the Hero's URL, that can be the same again because we've got this different HTTP verb with the post, so it takes it as a separate request. Uh, we're adding the hero from the input value and we're setting this HTTP options, which was the application JSON um, content type for HTTP headers. So uh, And then we pipe that. We pipe that. And if there is an error, we can catch the error and we can handle the error. But if we do not get an error, we get the observable of the hero type. Uh, we're going to tap into it. And for the uh, new hero, so. Uh, we get an observable of the hero type posted and then for the new hero um, we're going to log um, added the hero with the new hero ID okay so let's go ahead and just try that out And recall that um, in the in-memory data service, uh, let, let's let's just see the output first. So let's clear that, uh, refresh it. Let's add something here. So I add Jono. Okay, so hero service added hero with ID 21. So that's that 21 there, that's, which is the next number after. And how did we get that 21? Well, we're calling this log function um, with the new hero ID. And how did we get the new hero ID? Well, 
we have this in-memory data service uh, implementing the in-memory database service so we have our database here of our heroes um, but we've overrid the generation ID method to ensure that a hero always has an ID um, if the hero's array is empty uh, the method below returns the initial number 11 okay so since we already we don't have an empty heroes array if the heroes array is not empty the method below returns the highest hero ID plus one so this generation of the ID will just occur um, by default so whenever we add anything to the array or anything like that um, it will just take care of that for us so this hero service is adding the destructured uh, hero object so object curly braces name colon uh, whatever we input the name and that's been as the hero type um, and that can be as the hero type because this associated ID gets uh, automatically returned uh, you know when we're dealing with uh, adding something to the hero array so with that because we have a new hero um, we sort of can tap into that and log that otherwise we catch the error okay so that's all good so let's move on to deleting a hero oh and it says it here it expects the server to generate an ID for the new hero which it returns in the observable hero to the caller that's great so let's get into deleting it so in the heroes component HTML and where about are we going to put this after the hero name in the repeated li okay so we want the option to be able to delete like that so then we've got this X here. Um, yep. To position the delete button at the far right of the hero entity. CSS will be in the final code review. Okay, so let's go to that. Let's get this final code review. Uh, sorry, let's click this. So in the heroes component, CSS. Let's go ahead and put that in there. So now we should have some styling, and yes, we do. It's nice and floated to the right or right aligned flex end or how they've styled it uh, I won't look into that but we've got that sorted so if we scroll back to the delete method we can go ahead and add that TypeScript there to the component type script and once again this uh, takes a hero type it doesn't return anything um, but okay so we'll just have the service first and then we'll get into it so although the component delegates hero deletion to the hero service it remains responsible for updating its own list of heroes the components delete method immediately removes the hero to delete uh, from that list. 
anticipating that the hero service will succeed on the server. There's really nothing for the component to do with the observable returned by the hero service delete, but it must be subscribed to anyway. If you neglect the subscribe, the service will not send the delete request to the server. As a rule, an observable does nothing until something subscribes. So we can confirm that for ourselves. So let's just copy the delete service. Uh, and we'll put that below the add hero service in here. And let's just have a look. Okay, so there's a few notes and that the delete hero calls the HTTP client delete. So that's just another HTTP verb and they're the four main ones that we use. Um, the URL is the hero's resource URL plus the ID of the hero to delete. Okay. You don't send data as you did with put and post. You still send HTTP options. Just refresh the browser. And let's try it out. So let's try deleting robber man. And okay, that looks like it's been popped out. Uh, or not popped out, sliced out. Um, okay, so what's going on? We have the hero, uh, we have this button delete and that will call the delete function for that particular hero that got passed in. So the hero will get passed in. Um, so with the hero, we can filter the list and we're filtering um, so we're going through this uh, where is it? this heroes so heroes um, has this get heroes on ng on a net and in the get heroes where setting this heroes equal to heroes and that's occurring through the service so all of this heroes data here that's getting set to that variable this heroes um, so we want to go through all of the data we have in our server we want to filter so this is like a high order function uh, functional programming sort of technique and this filter we'll go through this array and as it goes through each hero of the array, so each ob object so as that's a h and it'll go to the next h uh, it's evaluating this uh, expression um, h not equal to a hero so what that means is it's filtering through each of the H's. So it's filtering through this list of heroes. And when a particular hero in the list is not equal to a hero that we've passed in, that will, uh, well, for, uh, that will reset the um, we can re uh, reassign the heroes array to exclude that particular hero so for example if we click on narco we're passing in the narco hero and we delete it we're passing the narco hero into the um, into the button. So we do the click event. We pass the narco hero in, and when we go to filter it, um, for every single thing that isn't the narco object, that's what we'll return. In the uh, by filtering it through, so because we got it equal to not, not equal to narco, that means everything except for the narco object will be returned.
So that's essentially the entire list except for Narco, so he'll be removed. And that's what we're reassigning the variable to. So now that we've got the list, um, we can call the hero service to delete the hero uh, as well. So yeah, that's what it was saying before. We're deleting it from the list in the component itself, but we still need to subscribe to this. Uh, and let's take a look at what that's task has been delegated to that. So in the delete, we're deleting the hero from the server. Uh, okay. So it looks like we can pass in to the delete hero either the hero itself or the number of the ID. Um, depending on the situation and then we're returning the observable, the hero observable. So we create this variable ID which we have a ternary operator so if the type of hero uh, equals number we can just return hero uh, or the ID will be hero um, but if the uh, if we're not passing a number in oh sorry if we yeah, if we're not passing a number in, we can use the hero ID directly. So that will be the ID. Um, it's basically saying if we've only passed a number in, uh, then the ID will just be that number. But if the whole hero object's passed in, um, we need to use all object notation to get that ID. So, with that ID we can construct the new URL, which is just the uh, standard URL that we've been using, but we need it for a particular ID, so we just use this template literal syntax with the uh, ID that we've just created, depending on what's been passed. And it, to me it does look like um, just the uh, whole object will be passed in um, but I think there's probably a reason for that uh, for safety or something uh, anyway in the service we're returning this HTTP dot delete with a delete um, for a hero with that new URL and the HTTP options which is the uh, JSON formatting and then if we get the uh, observable of the hero type back which means it all went good it got deleted um, yeah we don't actually have to um, like it's, it's already been deleted but we just pipe to that observable and then we just log a response and catch the errors if any errors occur so that's pretty similar to before and that will wrap up the deleting uh, functionality or all the crud functionality for that matter so there's one more thing to do and in the last exercise we'll learn how to chain observable operators together so you can minimize the number of similar HTTP requests and consume network bandwidth economically. You will add a hero search feature to the dashboard as the user types a name into the search box. You will make repeated HTTP requests for heroes filtered by that name. Your goal is to issue only as many requests as necessary. Start by adding a search heroes method to the hero service. Okay. So we'll just do that under delete, search heroes, and this method returns immediately with an empty array if there is no search term. This method returns immediately with an empty array 
because there's no search term. The rest of it closely resembles Get Heroes, the only significant difference being the URL, which includes a query string in the search term. Okay, so let's have a look. So in the HTML, we're going to have some sort of input where we can type in to a search bar. And for that particular search term, which will be a string, um, we're expecting a hero, a list of heroes um, as an observable type. So as before, if you know we do some blank spaces and we trim it, and that ends up being nullish, we would just return an empty observable, uh, which is just an empty hero array. Um, but if we do type something in that isn't uh, trimmed to a falsy expression, we can return uh, this HTTP get method with uh, the hero type or a hero object and the URL is has this extra query parameter so this query parameter that's going to be used um, to sort of query that um, whatever our term is that we typed into the input and then whatever value we've typed into the input um, that will make the request to this particular endpoint. Um, so this is sort of can be a variable, and uh, it just matches the name with the string, and so you can do a search on it uh, in the back end. Um, so we're going to pipe and we're going to handle any errors as before um, but if we get a hero array back we can tap into that and for that hero array we get back if there is a length meaning there are heroes in the array so the search term returns searches uh, yeah if, if, there's, if we search something and there's responses back to that query and that means the length there is a length so since there will be a length in that case we can log something saying we've found heroes matching that term but if there is no length that means we have not so we log no heroes matching that term okay so let's add this uh, open the dashboard component and add the hero search element Okay, so we'll need to create that. So in the dashboard component, and this should break it. This template looks a lot... Oh, did they change anything else? I'll just copy that anyway. all pretty much the same so let's just delete that and all one of these uh, let's just do a control C okay so let's ng generate component hero search and that will be in components And that should automatically add it to the app modules, declarations and stuff with the CLI. Um, replace the generated hero search component template with an input and a list of matching search results as follows. Okay. So we've, uh, let's just close everything. So we've created this new component. Um, 
hero search. Let's put this in here like that. And we'll go ahead and we'll go to the final code review to get the CSS. So we can get that. Open the CSS file. Copy that in. Save it. Now if we do an npm start, we should be able to get back um, whatever it's created for us. So we're nearly there. Um, Okay, so now we get a new error. Okay, that's good. So let's add that to the TypeScript. Okay, so we need to change the location of uh, the interface. Hero, and then probably, uh, where is it? So, oh, in services, slash the hero service. So if we save that, that should no longer error. Let's take a look at what that has done. Okay, so on the dashboard, we've got this hero search. Um, okay, there we go. If we type in N, we get everything with an N in it. N A, uh, everything with an N A in it. N A R, Narco. That's cool. If we click on Narco, we actually get rerouted to Narco's page, so that's great. Um, so let's go through and understand what we've done. So in the search component, as the user types in the search box, an input event binding calls the component search method with the new search box value. Uh, we've added this async pipe to one of the ng4s. ng4 repeats hero objects. Notice that the ng4 iterates over a list called heroes with a dollar sign, not heroes. The dollar sign is a convention that indicates heroes is an observable, not an array. Uh, and since ng4 can't do anything with an observable, this uh, pipe uh, character with the uh, line uh, followed by a sync. Um, this identifies Angular's async pipe and subscribes to an observable automatically. So you won't have to do that in the components. So let's just take a look at that. We'll take a look at the template. Um, so search component. Uh, so hero search. It's just a hit. Oops. It's just um, the title hero search plus the input. So that's going to be the hero search in a label, in a H4, and that label is for the search box. So this ID search box here corresponds to that for there. And we've given this input a template uh, variable with search box. Thus, uh, we can have this event, an input event. So we input uh, data, uh, you know, into, we type something into the field uh, and that will call a search method with the value of the input uh, through that notation. And then below that, for the search result, um, yeah, does this have CSS as well? Oh no, we've added the CSS. Um, yeah, and this is the main new thing. So 
let hero of the observable hero, and that observable hero will change every time we've changed our text. So it's going to filter through the uh, list of heroes that are in the server, and then it's going to display and match that with our case. And since that's an observable and we're not subscribed to it, because uh, we didn't create that in the service or anything, um, we made this in this hero search component. Um, we need to subscribe through it in the template itself. And with that, we have a corresponding A router link. So when we click on that particular search, um, so we type in NA, this just shows us NA. Ah, uh, oh, that's the search term that we have. And then if we click on tornado, oh, sorry. If we click on NAR and we click on narco, it takes us to that page. So that's the uh, router link routing us to that page uh, for that particular hero ID. And it just displays the hero name. So that's good. So let's take a look at the, uh, the functionality behind this. And Okay. Notice the declaration of heroes dollar sign as an observable. You will set it in ng on a knit. Before you do, focus on the definition of the search terms. So the search terms is this rxjs subject. Uh, the search terms property is an rxjs subject, so the private search terms is a new subject, so we must import subject from rxjs along with observable and some of the operators. And okay, so we've defined this heroes observable, which is has a dollar sign of the type observable of hero list, because we're going to display a whole list of heroes. Um, and we've declared this private property uh, search terms. So this search terms is a new subject uh, of the type string. So a subject is both a source of observable values and an observable itself. You can subscribe to a subject as you would any observable but you can also push values into that observable by calling its next value method as the search method does. Okay. So we can, the subject is an observable, but it's also a source of observable values. So it's an observable that we can push values into that observable and that's done by calling this next value um, the event binding to the text box input event cause the search method okay every time the user types in a text box the binding cause search with the text box value a search term the search terms become an observable emitting a steady stream of search terms. So, okay. So, whatever we type in, that's the value. The search box value, that calls the search method. This search method has a string. It doesn't uh, return something, but what it does is it... Um, it calls the next, uh, so this search term, next term. So we type something in, and let's, let's say we type something new in. Um, this, because this is a subject, which is an observable that can sort of change, or we can input different observables into that. Um, we can achieve that through 
the input. So we type something, then we type something new in, we type a new string in, and that new string will be the new search term, and that's gonna be a new, that new search term will be an observable because it's going to need to talk to the server, see what uh, data that search term, that query uh, sort of, uh, which ones are equal in the database, and then we'll return something. So, <clears throat> so passing a new search term directly to the search heroes function, so the hero search heroes function uh, function. Oh, okay, so that's in the service. Did we do that already? Oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, that's right. Um, Oh, okay, okay, so this is what's, this is the HTTP that's occurring under the hood, so that's just a query parameter with the term, uh, and that endpoint is going to return just a console log, um, or the, it's going to tap into that and do a console log, but it will, so that's, it will also return the hero array. So because this, uh, okay, so passing a new search term directly into the search heroes array after every user keystroke would create an excessive amount of HTTP requests. Oh, okay, so that's happening after every keystroke and that's taxing on the server and the resources um, and burning through data plans. So instead the ng on init method pipes the search terms observable through a sequence of RxJS operators that reduce the number of calls to the search heroes uh, function. Ultimately returning an observable of timely hero search results to each hero array. Each is a hero array. So here's a closer look at the code. So each operator works as follows. Okay, so let's just take a look. So for this hero is observable that we're subscribing to in the template with this async pipe, we're calling this search terms and this search terms is a subject and um, it's going, that subject is an observable, so we can pipe to pipeable operators. And there's three in this case. So there's a debounce time, meaning that every time we uh, do a keystroke, we have to wait 300 milliseconds before considering the next term. So you can't just type in a thousand things and a thousand things. Uh, we'll make a thousand HTTP requests because it's not very, you know, it might be expensive if you you know, have server costs or something like that. Um, and it's also might be overkill. Uh, just making that many and slowing dead things down a bit. Then there's this distinct until change. So ignore new term if same as previous term. So if someone types something like AB, but then they change it, they search for the term A, then they type in B, but then they backspace it because they realize they didn't spell it like that or something like that uh, in less than 300 milliseconds. Then effectively that's unchanged. So it will ignore the previous term because um, it hasn't changed. And then there's this switch map operator. So switch to a new search observable each time the term changes. So given that it takes 300 milliseconds and the term hasn't changed, 
um, we can switch to a new observable. Um, so it takes the term, it takes a term and it calls um, the hero service search heroes term. So I guess effectively um, Actually, let's just take a look at what they've written. So the advance time th takes three milliseconds. The distinct until change ensures that a request is only sent after the filter text, but switch map pause the search service for each search term that makes it through debounce and distinct until change. It cancels and discards previous search observables returning only the latest search service observable. With the switch map operator, every qualifying key event can trigger an HTTP client get method call, even with a 300 millisecond pause between requests. You could have multiple HTTP requests in flight and they don't they may not return in the order sent. Okay. Switch map preserves the original request order while returning only the observable from the most recent HTTP method call. Results from prior calls are cancelled and discarded. Note that cancelling a previous search here is observable doesn't actually abort a pending HTTP request. Unwanted results are simply discarded before they reach your application code. Remember that the component class does not subscribe to the Heroes Observable. That's the job of the async pipe in the template. So let's try that out. And we've seen this, so we type in Bombasto, B O M, and then it comes up Bombasto. And let's just clear the messages so we can see. Uh, so let's type in C E L. Okay. Now I'm going to backspace that and type in C E L. Um, okay, so I must have done that in over 3 milliseconds but we can see that we didn't do the C and the E again um, yeah so if I backspace L and type in L really fast that won't repeat that yeah so that's the heroes the two of heroes uh, first angular application and I know this uh, RxJS can be a bit confusing, so don't let that put you off or anything like that. Um, I've done plenty of development without having to go into that, just you know, making components and services and all that sort of stuff. But if you really want to dig in deep to the Angular code base, you probably, well, I probably need to have a good look at some of the RxJS stuff as well. Um, but just to sort of recap the RxJS and. Uh, We've, we created this service, and this service searches the heroes for a particular term, and then that term is given through an input field. So you type something into the input uh, search bar, and provided that it is not empty after we trim it, we can make a HTTP GET request to the server and that has a query parameter and it searches for that particular term. And then our backend will sort of handle that and give us, um, you know, the terms uh, that match that. And in our case, that's sort of taken care for us through this uh, uh, memory service. But and then with that result, or list of results, so we're expecting a list of heroes or uh, or either an empty uh, list of, or an empty array 
an array of heroes or an empty array, depending on if the search term is met or not. And if the search term is met, um, or not met even, um, through our hero search component, uh, what we're doing is we've created this heroes observable. <coughs> so yeah, we've got this hero observable, um, and we set that heroes observable in the ng on init, and we set it equal to this search terms uh, observable, which is another, or oh, it's a subject, like an, just think of it as another observable of the type string, but this observable, we can, um, it can be called uh, and updated, so that's what this search method is here. So when we put input in, we call that search method, and then that updates the uh, subject with a new observable string, just the next one. That's how we call next, we call the next term. And because we set the observable, um, so let hero of heroes, which is an observable of a list, and because it's a list we can display each one, but because we've got a list of observables, um, and in the ng on init we're setting it to this search terms, which is this subject, which can be updated by typing in new things, and then um, we pipe that new request um, to include these debounce and distinct until change, so that's not taxed on the server, but the real work is being done in this switch map, to so switch to the new search observable. So that is uh, effectively because um, we're calling the next term um, with that new search term, we can call the hero servers with that term, and then that's the you know the thing doing the HTTP request and doing the work for us. So yeah, that was quite um, quite interesting. Uh, we managed to cover through all of the core concepts of Angular. So with that, um, should be able to uh, make Angular web applications. Um, and we may make a uh, another Angular video series, and maybe even do a commercial Angular app, and, or a full stack mean Angular and Node sort of application. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it helped. It certainly helped myself. And um, if you got something out of it, just you know, subscribe or give us a like or something like that. And um, yeah, appreciate the time.